and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO DVS, and thank you so much for everybody that's already liked and subscribed to our YouTube channel. The subscriptions are definitely going up, the watch minutes are definitely going up in the many millions now. So all I need you to do, guys, in the next five seconds, challenge yourself, go and hit the subscribe button and that little bell button to get notified of all our weekly content. Done. Right, hopefully you've subscribed if you haven't already. Like all YouTube channels, subscriptions mean a massive amount to us here at DVS. It is literally drives the content and the engagement forward. So please, please do subscribe. It takes no time at all and it's free. It costs you nothing. Okay, so what are we looking at today? Some of you guys have already seen a post I did earlier this week on LinkedIn. If you haven't, then this in front of you will explain exactly what we want to point out this week. So I am wearing a cap today. I had a operation on my head. So rather than show you the disgusting, uh, massive operation scar on the top of my head, I am wearing a cap uh, because it is early morning and I want you to keep your breakfast where it belongs. So apologies for the cap. It's not a, a statement of coolness, although I am uber cool, as you already know. Uh, it is merely to protect you guys more than anything else. So in front of us, we have a Luminite Alertex wireless lockdown system. Now, let me explain. Those of you that work in education settings, whether it's primary school, secondary school, college, university, you know, any education setting, it could be, uh, you know, like a community centre that also uh, has a learning facility or function in there. So really they need to have a lockdown procedure you guys are probably aware of it more from like the usa american sort of uh, movies or films etc but those of you that work in those settings are probably already quite familiar with a lockdown system a lockdown system simply is a way that if something happens like an event happens so let's just say an unwanted person enters a school somebody can trigger the lockdown system like this, a wireless system here, and all of the relevant points in that school will be alerted to the fact that they are in a lockdown situation and then they carry out their plan according to how they've written it out and their, their action plans. That could be to lock the pupils in the classroom to maintain safety, it could be to go to a, a muster point, it could be using these units to lock the access control doors to restrict movement through that uh, building. Now there's lots of different ways and connotations. We're not gonna get into the nitty gritty technicalities and legalities because it does change quite often. But those of you that are aware of it will be very aware of it. Those of you that are not, I urge you to go and check up on that legislation. So, Luminite. Lots of you will be aware of Luminite's ability to do external battery power detection. They've been doing it for many, many years. One of the leaders in the field. So if you want an external can use it internally, I guess. Uh, battery operated, long range, fault free, very reliable PIR microwave detection system. Luminite has always been one of those uh, key players in that market. What they identified a few years back is how they can diversify their product range to bring their ultra reliable and long range battery technology to other areas of the security industry. Now, Alertex is one of those connotations as you can see in front of me so if i put these units up they are a little bit heavy so i'll stop them or prevent them from falling over so inside both of these units i will open them up shortly they are both battery operated both wireless units this is a sounder this is a call station with a sounder and a key reset so effectively the master station what the lockdown system allows you to do is deploy this across a school or a building. Now it could be temporary, it could be permanent. The great thing with the battery technology is you don't need any wiring. Now you can imagine some of these older schools which are extremely difficult to get cabling around. I know I've been there, I'm an extent, uh, you know, installation engineer. You know, some of the schools were extremely difficult to cable. This alleviates that problem because you can put these units they work up to, I've got a bit of blurb, which I will go through shortly, but they work up to one kilometer apart, these devices, and they sort of become hops. I'll, again, I'll explain that shortly. This allows you to deploy a system with no cabling, very cost effective. So all you're doing is fixing these units in the appropriate places. So very quick to install, very easy to program, 
massive, massive cost efficiency compared to a wired system that could take you weeks, let's be really honest here, days if not weeks to wire this kind of system in a traditional wired system. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of buildings still contain asbestos, which again, you can't go and disturb, which could be a primary cable route for you guys. And therefore you can't install this kind of wired system due to the restriction on cabling or access into hatches and lofts, etc., where the asbestos still is and can't be disturbed. You know, there are still many of these buildings around. So this again, alleviates that problem. It's a fantastic cost effective way to deploy lockdown systems with very little in the way of cabling well no cabling very little in the way of installation time massive cost saving they are really cost effective but again giving you that ultra reliable system using rf and the battery technologies i guess what the downside would be in deploying such technologies because there's always positive and negatives with everything in life as we all know the downside would be the batteries do need to be replaced at some point now you are going to get very good longevity and again it does also depends on how often they're used of course but hopefully never would be the ideal but the batteries will need to be replaced at some point okay just to show you what the batteries are so this is like a, a, a sounder again battery operated there is a full instruction manual i've done a video on this before very simple to program but if i just take the caption screws off it's a quarter turn i've already done that and you can see here, I'm going to be a bit gentle. I'm going to bring this closer to the camera. There's two D lithium cells in there. Now, very simple PCB board underneath there. There's dip switch settings. Like I said, in this manual here, it tells you how to do the programming. It's literally a case of doing dip switches. Pardon me. Our button presses on this. And since you can see, if I bring this a little closer. You can see the battery cells, you can see the terminals here for inputs and outputs, and you can see the push buttons there, which we assign for the site ID, etc., and to make this a complete system. Now, I've already done this, or Luminite have already done this for me, so there's no need to run through this, but it's a very simple setup process. And there's a couple of jumpers in there. Uh, I've referred to the manual exactly what you need to do. And like I said, there is up to a one kilometer range on this. What this allows you to do as well is make sure I don't trap the cable. I do want to put this back in nicely. The reason I'm sort of highlighting this is obviously many schools are on half term already as we speak. Oh, I am putting it, I'm putting it the wrong way as always. Many schools are on half term already. The reason I want to get this video out is there's still time. If you need to do this before the schools return, there's plenty of time, stock available, and it's so quick and easy to install. You can get this equipment next week and install it by the end of the week. And you have satisfied the school's obligations and needs to their pupils. It really is as simple as that. Um, and again, you just need to put the batteries in there, program it up, screw it to the wall, what could be simpler? Obviously, RF aerial needs to be fitted away sort of down from the ceiling so you've got enough you don't want to affect that aerial. And it's literally as simple as that. So, they've also added this lovely little remote control. So it's a lockdown remote control and I'll show you the testing on this. Obviously, we're here inside the DVS dammit room. I can't fit these one kilometer apart. You are gonna to have to sort of believe me on this. Obviously, when you fit the units internally, you've got obstructions. So you've got walls, pipework, electrical circuitry, etc. They will reduce that one kilometer. The one kilometer is best case in an open, outside, open uh, environment with no obstructions. Inside, it's still going to be several hundred meters. Let's really be honest. But again, before you screw it to the wall, just test it, make sure it works, and then you know, screw it to the wall, a couple of drill holes, and you're done. You know, you guys know this. I don't really have to be telling you this but I am for some reason I find myself doing that um, and again just insert the D-cells program in your way what could be simpler um, as far as I'm or to my knowledge there isn't anything like this to this caliber on the market it's a very unique offering they also do this in a fire alarm setup so if you're 
not so much into the lockdown, the alert tech side, but you would really like to get into the fire alarm side using the same principle. They have the same versions in red, so core points, repeat sounders, etc. with they're in red, which can satisfy temporary construction sites, you know, timber frame construction where they have to be covered with fire alarms and these new uh, regulations for building site, you know, the new housing constructions. I couldn't think of the word there. If it's a site again that can't be cable but you need a fire alarm it could be a, an event a festival and you really again festivals is a great example where you want to put these fire alarm points you know on uh, you know pods outside with their fire extinguishers what a great way battery operated you know outside ip rated and you can put core points with sounders and then it'll trigger so if you trigger one core point here all the sounders are linked to it will also go so everybody site wide gets alerted so again slightly different principle to the lockdown system where we're trying to enact uh, a closure of people within an area uh, or to alert them to the fact there could be an issue the fire alarm version is obviously to alert there is a, a potential or actual fire or hazardous uh, scenario so uh what does it come with it comes with a key so you need a master station of course this is the unit that does you know the, the heavy lifting effectively comes with a core point and a sounder and again we can buy or you can buy sounders uh as that is there so a sounder on itself you can have sounders and core points across the site so you can have you know deploy these if you need to or you can just buy sa uh, core points on their own so depending on how you want this to be broken up speak to us we'll do a system design Laura, if you guys don't know Laura Granger at Lumini, go and add her on LinkedIn. She is the most passionate salesperson around this technology that you will ever meet. She will help you to the nth degree. So please do go and add Laura Granger on LinkedIn, who works for Lumini, uh, and she will definitely help you if DVS can't. We will be able to help you. So come to DVS, and we'll, of course, give you the assistance required. So Laura has kindly lent me this equipment, which she prepared for me. Uh, apologies um, and again we've got this new lockdown remote here so with the lockdown remote I uh, guess they you can buy these uh, they can put this into a lanyard so the teacher the uh, the carer whatever that looks like can wear that around the lanyard around their neck so as they're walking around the school they may not be near a call point it may not be the type of application where you can install call points so we do these wireless fobs as well which is the same principle as triggering the call point these fobs need to be within 100 meters of a core point here, da -da, which generally most applications you'd be absolutely fine, or you just design it in a way that would allow that functionality. But again, very flexible, it gives you the option to add this fob in. There is also a software, so the software can be installed on a PC in say the, um, uh, like you know, the, oh, you're not supposed to call them this, like the, the grounds persons, um, or secretary, or, um, you know somebody who looks after the build and it could be an admin assistant could be a pc on the school runs the free software which allows you then to sort of give have updates on this it tells you what was triggered it tells you the battery levels and statuses etc so again the software is another option you don't have to have it in most instances i would see people wouldn't be running the software particularly but you know it is another option speak to us if you want that so let me read this lovely letter out that law has written Hello Dave and thank you for supporting us with this video on the Alertex lockdown. We're very passionate about this product. If you've seen a video on it before, we urge you to go watch it again. It's a bit more detailed about how it works and programmed. But again, this, there's no other product like it or certainly not that we've come across. So again, please go and check this product out. Go and check the Luminite website out. Speak to your DBS sales rep or add Laura on LinkedIn as I've already mentioned. Okay. So... We've also enclosed, uh, thanks for doing a video, blah, 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 all you need to do is insert the batteries for the units to be activated. The total range, transmission range can be up to one kilometre when you're inside, like I've already said, the range is reduced for obvious reasons. The radio protocol, and this is important for you guys for testing, the radio protocol dictates that there should be a rest period of two to three minutes between core point activations. Just wait for the red light to go on. So if you're in testing and you trigger this call point, don't run to the next one and press it straight away. Wait for three minutes, the red light will go off and then it allows you to reactivate. It stops or prolongs battery life without having so many activations, okay? I have enclosed the key fob, 
which is designed for the key school staff to wear on a lanyard as long as they are within 100 meters of any alert text point the system will activate when both buttons are pressed for a few seconds and we'll demonstrate that shortly just a bit of crap background that you might want to use and again this might be important for you guys so I should have put my glasses on Ofsted inspectors now require schools to demonstrate that their lockdown alert sounds distinct to their fire alert as one requires a place of safety to be found and the other to evacuate it goes back to what we just said between the fire you know one requires you to be retained and one requires people to evacuate so the sound there of the school lockdown system needs to be very distinct from the fire alarm so two different uh, sounders and just to let you know the sounds can be altered on this you can alter the volume and the tone on this to become different from the existing fire alarm okay back to the letter with alert text you can choose 32 different sounds and the blue sounds and call points mean they look very different to fire alarms the decibel on these units have been set to their lowest level, but they can go to 117 decibels. Please refer to page 8 of the instructions if you would require to change this. Instructions here, 117 decibels is certainly loud, especially when you're only two feet away from it. Allure tax is now one of the top selling ranges and we are getting interest all the time. Sadly, there are still incidents in school and these schools haven't had proper lockdown systems so this is one of the reasons we really want to require of require we really want to promote this as a solution you know i have children in school like many of you out there i dread to think that the schools that they're in haven't taken the appropriate precautions or you know and i'm sure they have but i would like to think they've done everything in their power that if god forbid something did happen that they were able to give all of the ability for all of the children and people and you know students teachers workers etc to be as safe as possible and at least to be alerted to the fact that there could potentially be an issue okay so here are some of the headline features schools and installers like the fact that it's wireless it's so quick and easy to install without any expensive cabling Dun -dun. The relay output can be fitted so alert text can work with the third party access control. Really important. When this is triggered, you can trigger a relay, battery operated again, which then locks down a door. It could close a relay contact, which simply keeps a door closed or triggers a door closer to close, etc. So many different uses on how that relay can be integrated. But again, it further adds to the capability and the reach of what this system can do and provide. Powered by lithium batteries, which we've already explained, two to three year battery life. But we suggest an automatic change out every two years, which installers can build into their aftercare package. Fantastic. Again, with your maintenance packages, you should be going to site testing these at least annually, and then you can replace the batteries every two years. As suggested, the batteries will outlast that two years, but we suggest that you do that every two years. An IP bridge is also available which allows larger schools to monitor and control devices from one central location this goes back to that software if you use the ip bridge that has the output which goes onto the lan which then has the software on a pc which allows you to monitor larger schools again if you want to use it it's there using this on its own is probably enough for most people and it allows you to check activation logs, deactivate units, etc. check battery levels. It also allows you to send texts and emails from that software. One master controller that uh, can control up to 64 slave devices. Very expandable, very scalable. Let me know if you need any other further information. Like I said, guys, add Luminite to your LinkedIn contacts and especially Laura, and she will definitely show you or speak to you if you need anything again do speak to your dvs sales rep we're starting to see there was actually a list of um some really cool clients in there which i'm gonna mitigate from this video because i don't think it's fair to mention them but there are we're starting to see some real real large orders going out for this wireless technology cost saving ease of installation low maintenance very stable using the you know luminites rf technology and you can be in and out compared to wired systems this is so cost effective so again we're going to give you a little demonstration here so i've powered the units up already um i will lock this up 
Let me just. Uh, one of the uh, screws is slightly skew with. There we are. Goes in lovely that way. Push and quarter turn, push and quarter turn, done. So, apologies for this because it's going to be a little bit loud, I'm afraid, guys. Just take a sip of coffee. So, the first thing I'm going to do is press the two buttons on the lockdown on this key fob. There we go. So we've turned that one down for the video, thankfully. But you can see, that's on the lowest sounder. I still, I don't know if you can hear that on the video, that's still horrific. That one triggered first, because that was the one that activated. Both blue going. Oh, it's horrendous. Reset it on the key on the side. So that'll send the reset signal now. So you reset it, just to reset it, turn it, reset it, and it'll send the reset signal down the chain. The more devices and the further way apart, there may be a little bit of latency. As you saw there, when I pressed that button, you've got to press it for a good four or five seconds, and that prevents um, misuse effectively. That one picked it up, which triggered first, and then relayed the signal to this one to then trigger. You could see that one did it first. So if we do it again, so press and hold for five seconds. My ears are gonna love me for this. It'll, be, it'll hear a little beep beep in a minute. Now, of course, you've got to wait two to three minutes now for activation, haven't we? So you're going to have to leave this for... Let's pause the video for one second, and then we'll do it again. And then we're going to do the core point test. Okay, so we've given it the rest period required, as we stated earlier on in the video. So we're going to demonstrate the core point activation now. So if you've got one or many core points that are dotted around the site, it's like any emergency brake glass or any fire alarm core point. All you need to do is, one, make sure you've got the reset key, lift up the flap, and when I push this, this should be relatively quick because I'm activating the master unit, which should send the signal to all of the slave devices effectively. So we're gonna press this button here. Straight away, and then that one goes. Okay. Reset the core point. And then using the reset key. There we are, all stops. It's as simple as that, guys. Pressing it, reset it, and then using the reset key to turn the units off when the actual lockdown is cleared. What could be simpler? It is literally as simple as that. So, next thing we're gonna do is I am going to try, I'll leave this by here. I'm gonna go and we're gonna go for a walk. So we're gonna stop the video for two minutes. Again, we've got to give it the rest period. And just to see that this has got more range than just the one meter I've got in front of me, we'll go for a little walk to the sort of entrance of DBS. We'll push the two lockdown buttons and then we'll come back and hopefully these will be an alarm because it's within the 100 meters, but we're internally now. So, you know, even if we get 80 meters, that's still very good range. So I'm gonna stop the video, give it the two minutes and then we'll go for a little walk. Okay, so I've got the remote here. You can see the units behind me. They're not in alarm uh, currently. We're gonna go for a little walk. Oh, I've left the door open. It's actually not raining here in Cardiff for a change. Uh, I don't know about you guys, the weather has been terrible here in Wales, but it is actually relatively nice today. It was quite nice yesterday. Got a bit of rewilding going on here as well. So, and if you need any hike vision, don't forget we're the people to go to. So we've got the remote here. So we're away from the unit. Obviously walking, I could keep walking, but you know, the 100 meter rule, well, it's gonna be 70, 80, like I said before, because of the, especially because it's an aluminium clad building. So we've got the remote here. We're gonna double press it. You should see the LED go from, uh, well, change colors of bicolor LED. So purposely pressing these two buttons, it should go green. There we go. So now, when we walk back into the demo room, that should have triggered. I don't know if you can hear that. So 
So you can see the one unit's already an alarm, the other one will pack up now. There you go, so it has a chain reaction effect. Both in a lot, I need to turn that off. There we go, done. And it's literally as simple as that, so it's a very simple test. We really hope you enjoyed this video. This is one of the industry's best kept secrets. I don't want it to be a secret anymore. I want everybody to be quoting, using, installing, or offering this to your customers. Most of our customer base have customers that are in the education setting or demand for this kind of application, or if not, the fire version. Please do get in contact with DVS or Laura from Luminite, who will be more than happy to help and put a system design together or parts list. I hope you enjoyed the video. Keep check out our video next week. I hope you have a great week and please do go check this product out. It's one of my favorite products right now. Thank you very much. <laughs>